Shalom family. I'm Brother Rael from Reunited Soul, and in this video, I'm going to discuss the Mosheic Law regarding laws number 68 through number 86. I will cover these laws in order from the widely accepted list from the 12th century scholar Maimonides. So let us nourish our soul with scripture, that we may reunite with the Most High, the Elohim of Yahzrael. All scriptures will be read verbatim from the King James Version Bible. Now let's get right into it. Welcome back to the Mosaic Law series, where I will cover the 613 laws or commandments found in Torah. Hopefully by now, you have seen the previous videos where I covered laws number one through number 67. And for the sake of time, I will forego the Mosaic Law series introduction. Now I do receive inspiration and knowledge from reading your comments. I greatly appreciate it. So please, whether you agree or disagree with my content, feel free to share your comments. I do ask, however, that you keep your comments respectful, whether you are addressing myself or anyone in the comments section. And those of you who have been with me for a while, that check on me from time to time, my heart is overwhelmed with joy. Much love to the family. With that said, there are 613 laws or commandments that we are covering in this series. Now do not get fixated on the number 613 because there are duplicate or repetitive commandments. And there are also religious traditions added, which we will see in this discussion. Religious traditions, not commandments from the Most High. There is a difference, and I will attempt to point these out as we come across them. And just to be clear, religious traditions is something that man has tasked to keep their followers engaged and not idle. Thus goes the saying, an idle mind or idle hands is the devil's workshop. In other words, followers that are too idle tend to think too freely and ask more questions. Questions that could be bothersome. It would do us well to know as a people that our covenant with the Most High has nothing to do with religion. Nothing to do with it. Our covenant has everything to do with keeping the Most High's laws, statutes, and commandments, as well as the heritage He has promised His people. So why even bother with a list of laws if there are religious traditions mixed in with it? And that is a fair question. My answer to that is this. We should know what the Most High commanded us to do. And this list can prove as a useful reference that provide us the scriptures in an orderly fashion to confirm these commandments. Now, the religious traditions that are mixed in clearly do not agree with the scriptures assigned to them, as you will see in a moment. So when we stick with scriptures, as in what thus said the Most High, the traditions of man that are mixed in are painfully obvious. Let's begin with law number 68 and number 69, which shares the same scripture. I will read both laws, then the assigned scripture. Law number 68, men must not shave their hair off the sides of their head. Law number 69, men must not shave their beards with a razor. The scripture assigned to these two laws is Leviticus chapter 19 verse 27, and I read, Ye shall not round the corners of your heads, nor shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard. Again, we have two laws, number 70 and number 71, which shares the same scripture. I will read both laws, then the assigned scripture. Law number 70, men must not wear women's clothing. 
law number 71 women must not wear men's clothing the scripture assigned to these two laws is Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5 and I read the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man neither shall a man put on a woman's garment for all that do, so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Law number 72, not to tattoo the skin. The scripture assigned to this law is Leviticus chapter 19 verse 28, and I read, Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. I know that this law may be a concern for many because of the times we are in, where permanently marking the body is commonly accepted or encouraged. Whether it is military, college fraternities or sororities, or celebrating a relationship or a breakup of a relationship. Even to go as far as religion. Permanently marking the body seems to be the universal means of communicating some kind of loyalty. This goes a lot deeper than time permits, especially regarding cutting and mutilating the body. So let us continue. Again, we have two laws, number 73 and number 74, which shares the same scripture. I will read both laws, then the assigned scripture. Law number 73, not to tear the skin in mourning. Law number 74, not to make a bald spot in mourning. The scripture assigned to these two laws is Deuteronomy chapter 14 verse 1. And I read, Ye are the children of the Lord your God. Ye shall not cut yourselves, nor make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. Law number 75. To repent and confess wrongdoings. The scripture assigned to this law is Numbers chapter 5 verse 7. And I read. Then they shall confess their sin which they have done. And he shall recompense his trespass with the principle thereof, and add unto it the fifth part thereof, and give unto him against whom he hath trespassed. Law number 76. To say the Shema twice daily. Now this is a law that is based solely on tradition and the religion of Judaism. You will see why in the moment, when I read you the assigned scripture. But allow me at least to explain the Shema, which in Hebrew means to hear. And the Shema consists of a combination of scripture such as Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 9, Deuteronomy chapter 11, verses 13 through 21, and Numbers chapter 15, verses 37 through 41. These scriptures are to be recited in the morning and the evening for those who practice the traditions of Judaism. Now pay very close attention to the scripture assigned to this law, which is Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7. And I read, And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. As you can clearly see, the assigned scripture does not agree with law number 76. The scripture does not command us to recite a combination of chosen scriptures twice daily. As a matter of fact, we are to speak of the Most High's commandments from time we rise to the time we lie down. It should be first and foremost on our mind and diligently teaching them to our children. So as a result, law number 76 does not qualify as a commandment, but merely a religious tradition of Judaism. 
law number 77, to serve the Almighty with prayer daily. The scripture assigned to this law is Exodus chapter 23, verse 25, and I read, And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Law number 78. The Kauhanim must bless the Jewish nation daily. The scripture assigned to this law is Numbers chapter 6 verse 23. However, I would like to start at verse 22 for better clarity. And I read, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons, saying, on this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them. Now, although law number 78 states for the priest to do this daily, it does not say according to the sign scripture how often this is to be done. As I mentioned earlier in this discussion, religious traditions are something that keep followers engaged and to prevent them from being idle. Traditions that are highly repetitive, if need be. And traditional activities that are done merely for public display. Now, I would, however, like to take advantage of this moment to read for you what it was that Aaron and his sons were to speak over the children of Yazrael, according to Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 26. And I read, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Trust and believe, brothers and sisters, someday, when, and I emphasize when, not if, but when, we are delivered by the Most High and restored as His people. This, what Aaron and his sons spoke over the people, will be our reality. All praise to the Most High Yah. Laws number 79 and number 80 share the same scripture. I will read both laws, then the assigned scripture. Law number 79, to wear Teflon on the head. Law number 80, to bind Teflon on the arm. The scripture assigned to these two laws is Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 8, and I read, And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. Again, here we have two laws based solely on tradition and the religion of Judaism. Where the assigned scripture is taken in a literal sense by displaying teflon, which is a pair of small black leather boxes with leather straps bound to the head and forearm to be seen visibly. The small black boxes contain scrolls inside inscribed with scripture from Torah. Again, just like law number 76, the assigned scripture is referring to the commandment that Moshe spoke. Traditions aside, many of us understand that the assigned scripture is not referring to accessories that can be worn on the body and simply removed at a designated time by man. So please, make note of laws number 79 and law number 80 as religious tradition. Law number 81, to put a mezuzah on each doorpost. The scripture assigned to this law is Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 9, and I read, And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. 
Again, here we have a small item called the mezuzah attached on the doorpost. There are guidelines as to only a qualified calligraphist can ascribe scriptures on the parchment road inside of the mezuzah. It must not only be on the doorpost, but it must be attached in a slanted position. Reason being was a compromise from those who attached it vertically and those who attached it horizontally. The middle ground was to attach it with a slant. So again, we're dealing with the traditions of Judaism by placing a particular item written by a qualified person and attached in a specific position where the assigned scripture simply commands us to write them. Law number 82. Each male must write a sefer Torah. The scripture assigned to this law is Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 19. And I read, Now therefore write ye this song for you, and teach it to the children of Israel. Put it in their mouths, that this song may be a, a witness for me against the children of Israel. Now, I find this law perplexing for the mere fact that the assigned scripture is referring to a song that the Most High commanded Moshe to write and teach it to the children of Yazrael to sing. It is an actual song that Moshe wrote. Now, for the common Yazraelite male to write the entire Torah is quite a tall order. Especially when they have chores to tend to and have to earn a living for his household. Again, here we have another tradition from the religion of Judaism. The assigned scripture is not even close to referring that each male write a Sefer Torah. And Sefer, by the way, means book in Hebrew. Now, on the other hand, the kings of Yazrael are tasked with writing an entire Torah for himself once he sits on the throne, as you will see in the next law. So please make note of law number 82 as religious tradition. Law number 83. The king must have a separate Sefer Torah for himself. The scripture assigned to this law is Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 18, and I read. And it shall be, when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priests, the Levites. Law number 84, to have a zit zit on four-cornered garments. The scripture assigned to this law is Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38, and I read, Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations, and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. With this law, we must understand that the religion of Judaism has decided to use tassels on four-cornered garments that they wear as undergarments, which clearly deviates from the assigned scripture calling for fringes. Fringes and tassels are not the same. As carnies would say in the carnival days of old, close but no cigar. And let's be very clear, brothers and sisters, Close or similar does not cut it when it comes to obedience to the Most High. To deviate from the word of the Most High is an act of rebellion or an act of pretension. I will let you decide which is the case here. So please, make note of law number 84, that it should be fringes in the borders, not tassels on four corners.
Law number 85, to bless the Almighty after eating. The scripture assigned to this law is Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 10, and I read, When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. And lastly, law number 86, to circumcise all males on the eighth day after their birth. The scripture assigned to this law is Leviticus chapter 12, verse 3, and I read, And in the eighth day the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. And there you have it, family. Laws number 68 through number 86. Not difficult to follow at all, brothers and sisters. We can do this. We focus on the assigned scripture that allowed us to identify laws which are actually commanded by the Most High from laws that are merely religious traditions of man which are not based on scripture. With that being said, always keep your trust in the Most High. Love Him with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. See to it that your household is in line with the Word of the Most High as best you can. I thank you for taking the time to watch. Again, I am Rael, your reunited soul brother. And with that, I say to you, Shalom.